Welcome to a Wednesday here at the Otana Today Show. It is Wednesday, July 9th. I am Betty Johnson, and we thank you for taking time out from your busy day to uh, check in with us. We've got a good show coming up. We do know that a lot of you do catch us on Charter Channel uh, 8, and we thank you for that because you can be seen, we can be seen uh, throughout the day, six days a week. It's a good opportunity to catch us there. Or if you prefer, we can be found on YouTube. And we do want to mention that you need to enter in the Owatonna Today Show in the search box. Or you can go to the thirdhandvideo.com, click on the Owatonna Today Show, and it'll take you to a list of the current shows in case you've missed one from a week or two in the past. And then if you like us on Facebook, you'll also receive notification each time that Leanne uploads a new program. So you won't uh, be able to miss any of them. You have all the opportunity to catch all of our programs. And as always, we do welcome any questions, comments, concerns, or ideas for shows or guests you may have. Simply let us know via email at owatonatoday at charter.net, or you can call Leanne at 390-5751. We're going to be talking today with Darren Reed of the Safe and Drug Free Coalition. And then, in case you haven't made any plans yet for summer and looking for some vacation ideas, Leanne's got some wonderful video of her trip to Mackinac, Mackinac Island. And that is coming up. So we're going to check in with some of our wonderful sponsors, and then we'll be back. So stay with us. Hi, I'm Jody Voison with the staff at Fairview Animal Medical Center, your other family doctor. Fairview Animal Medical Center is a proud supporter of the Oatana Today Show. When using a fire extinguisher, we suggest using the pass system. Pull the pin at the top of the extinguisher that keeps the handle from being accidentally pressed. Aim the nozzle toward the base of the fire. Squeeze the handle to discharge the extinguisher. If you release the handle, the discharge will stop. Sweep the nozzle back and forth at the base of the fire. After the fire appears to be out, watch it carefully since it may reignite. If you have the slightest doubt about whether or not to fight the fire, get out and close the door behind you. This has been a safety message from the Otana Fire Department. Hi, my name is Dave Olson and I'm with RNK Electric where we provide power to the people. We're proud supporters of the Owatonna Today Show. Darren Reed is our first guest, and in case some of you may not remember, if you did miss a program and are familiar with Darren, he is the brand new director of the Safe and Drug Free Coalition. Darren, thank you for taking time off from a very busy schedule to be here. Now, you've been uh, part of the Safe and Drug Free Coalition for how long? Just a little over a month. How's it going? Uh, very good. Busy. <laughs> uh, still trying to get out in the community, meet uh, people that are partners with the coalition. Mm -hmm. Uh, people that want to be involved, seeing what ways they can get involved in just meeting people, uh, doing some uh, media, some radio, some things like mm -hmm. that, and uh, just planning for the fall. Yeah, you have to. I mean, it's been a successful program so far, and you have to let people know it's going to continue on in Owatonna because it is necessary. Mm -hmm. it, is, it is needed. Now, uh, one of the things that uh, is very important, the, the legislature just passed medical marijuana, which shocked the daylights out of me. <laughs> and so what, is, what are the concerns with that? I mean, sure. a lot of people you know, probably are cheering, a lot of people are going, oh dear, right. not good. Yeah, and uh, we have some definite concerns with that as mm -hmm. well. And um, I think every Minnesotan should, uh, especially uh, people that are concerned about how it may affect their children and our youth. Mm -hmm. How um, will it? Well, that's, that's gonna be something that will happen we'll have to wait to see or hopefully we can prevent mm -hmm. and I'll give you some examples. Um, first of all, May 29th, Minnesota became the 22nd state in the country to legalize medicinal marijuana. I didn't realize it's that many. Yeah, it's almost half the mm -hmm. states in the country. Uh, however, uh, to applaud our legislators, um, Minnesota is one of the most restrictive states for medicinal marijuana and by that I mean it's not in some states where medicinal marijuana is legal, what it means is if you have a doctor signs off on this and mm -hmm. says you need it, um, you get a medicinal marijuana card or some type of identification and then you can smoke it. You can have marijuana on your possession and you can use it as you see fit. Where do they get it? I mean, are there There's dispensaries. Okay. There's like, like f they pretend like they're pharmacies. They're really not. It's mm -hmm. kind of uh, 
they're called dispensaries. Uh, so they go in there, they purchase it, they have to show their ID. It's all controlled. So they enter to a computer and they register it, make sure everything's there, and then they get their marijuana and they can smoke it and do what they want. But IDs, just like any other IDs, can be probably faked? I imagine, or s shared. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. um, so in Minnesota, it's not that way. Right now in Minnesota, First of all, it will not take effect until July 1st of 2015, so okay. about a year. Okay. But next July, anyone that has this medicinal marijuana certified by a doctor would be able to use marijuana in a pill form, and I okay. believe maybe some type of vapor um, available. And another way that Minnesota right now is a restrictive medicinal marijuana state, which we're happy about, is there's only certain ailments that qualify you to have this medicinal marijuana. So in some states, you could essentially walk into your doctor and say, my knees hurt really bad. I need something for the pain. And here's your card. And so they, mm -hmm. therefore, anyone can go. Medicinal marijuana is meant to be for the people that have severe pain, is what the, the uh, proponents of it uh, push. What about epilepsy? I've been hearing something That's part of it. Too. Mm -hmm. um, Right now in Minnesota, it's, uh, I don't have the list on me, but it's things like HIV, cancer, epilepsy, I believe, or seizures, um, other debilitating illnesses, terminal illness with less than a year, so these types of things. And it's been proven that marijuana does help for the people who have some of those effects? I don't know about proven. I think there's a lot of suggestions by the proponents that this is a great way, and I've heard plenty of people say that that has helped them. Um, so I just gave you a list of some things mm -hmm. that it's meant for. However, statistics show that the average user is a young white male with no history of terminal illness and a history of drug abuse. Mm -hmm. So that's mm -hmm. the person that's generally using it. And again, Minnesota, they won't be able to smoke it. It's just going to be in pill form as of right now. Um, well, that would kind of probably lose some of its appeal there, wouldn't it, if it's pill form as compared to smoking? Probably. To a certain um, degree. But again, the thing that should be of concern to us is the majority of states started out similar to this, mm -hmm. and it's just moved forward. The more it is okay, the more people are used to it and comfortable with it, then they add a little bit more to it. And then it get, becomes to the point where it's uh, mar medicinal marijuana is smoking of it, and you have your card. And as you mentioned earlier, there is that possibility of card sharing, fake mm -hmm. you know, use of the card. Uh, in Colorado, where we've heard now, Colorado and Washington State, it's legal for recreational use. So you don't need a card there. You can just walk in and buy if you're over the age of 21. But the interesting thing is before that, they had the medicinal marijuana mm -hmm. or smoking. And 77% of youth in substance abuse treatment centers admitted to using other people's cards numerous times. Mm -hmm. Of course, that shouldn't shock any of us. I mean, that's, again, that shouldn't shock us. But what concerns me even more is some of these states actually have vending machines on the streets. On the streets. Similar to what we used to have back in the, if you remember back in the 70s and early 80s, the cigarette vending machines. Yes. Mm -hmm. Which, of course, you cannot police up all the time. So who's saying who's buying it? So you could have anyone's medicinal marijuana card, swipe it, put your money in and you get your product. Um, so that is something that could be heading our way. And of course, anytime there's a legalized drug, the, another thing that scares us, and this is happening right now, is that it lowers the perception of harm. So mm -hmm. youth look at this as a medicine and they hear mm -hmm. about this, they assume it's safe. And that means when their friends or their peers show up at a party and have some marijuana to smoke, it's starting to get in their mind that it's a safe drug. And so they think, okay, I can try this or I can use it because it's safe, because it's a medicine. And so that is what we can start with right now. Our families can do, our parents can do, is talk to our youth, talk to our kids, and help them know the truth. Not what the propaganda or the media mm -hmm. or the proponents of marijuana want you to think but the truth, and that, that marijuana is still a drug. It's addictive, Regardless, yes. and it can be very harmful. Well, it concerns me about people is like alcohol, drinking and mm -hmm. driving. Absolutely. Because, you know, you're, you're still, you're high. You're not mm -hmm. going to be in control of everything. Absolutely. And out there driving, 
and that that's scary too, if, especially if you get on the streets. Well, especially if it's legalized. Yeah. That's that's the problem. And uh, stone driving mm -hmm. is a, is a legitimate concern in Colorado. That the numbers are startling. I don't have them all, but if you just checked on the internet or mm -hmm. search that, you could find all these numbers because they're just coming in because they haven't been legalized right. for too long. But I think the state itself is really shocked at what their numbers are. Their emergency room visits are up a hundred and some percent. And, and see, that's got to count for something when other states start to, uh, taking a look at should we legalize it. Mm -hmm. You look at all the problems other states have had. So maybe in some way, you know, hopefully if people are going to go nuts over this yeah. and go overboard, those statistics might hopefully reverse. Right, absolutely. Some of that. And again, you know, without trying to make this into a big scare campaign right. or something like that, because mm -hmm. we don't want that, but we do want the public to be aware of what is happening and how it can impact us in our community right now. And as I said, the first thing that is happening is anytime a legalization happens, there's so much media attention to it that that youth hears that and automatically assumes it's safer. And that already lowers that risk that's already there and they start to think, okay, it's not that harmful. Mm -hmm. And we don't want that to happen. We would need them to know that the truth is, is marijuana is still an addictive drug and can be very dangerous. So what is the Safe and Drug Free Coalition? What are your, you know, what are you going to be doing in regards to this? Well, we'll keep doing public um, information sessions. We'll have some town hall meetings. We will do presentations. We'll continue to work with the schools in the mm -hmm. school programs. We have curriculum in the schools where they will do programming to know about uh, being safe and drug free and we're going to continue all that and then if anyone has any concern or questions or wants to know how they can get involved they can contact us and we'll be glad to help them either get in touch with their legislator if that's what they want to do or if they want to uh, just get involved with us as a volunteer we'd be glad to have them that way too. Yeah. Now you mentioned you don't want to use scare ta tactics but sometimes you may need to. Sometimes I mean it is a scary thing it's mm -hmm. it is what Ever you feel it is, I guess, but um, that these are the truths. We're not embellishing anything. And it is a drug, you know. Absolutely. I'm not. I'm not on drugs. I don't do this, 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 and this. What do you do, marijuana? Well, yeah, that that's legal. Right. And that's how people are going to rationalize that. Mm -hmm. And then it, you know, it can lead to other things too. So, yeah, it is a scary, scary thing. Mm -hmm. So, well, you know, Darren, thank you for stopping by today. We know you've got a big job ahead of you. It is, you know, the Safe and Drug Free Coalition is an important part of our community. And we hope you keep coming back and keeping us updated as to what we, as uh, you know, adults can do. Absolutely. For not only for kids, but you know, older adults as well. Think, right. okay, let's let's see what we can do with it. Absolutely. And it, so it can be a, a, a concern for elderly too as well. Mm -hmm. So, and uh, next month sometime. Absolutely. We'll be back. Thank you so very much. So we hope that you got a little some of your questions answered with Darren. And when we come back, we're going to be talking with, uh, not talking, but I'm going to be um, presenting some of the other events that are, are going on through the month of July in Owatonna. So please stay with us. Hi, my name is Dave Efforts with TPS Insurance. We're here to handle all your insurance needs. We are a very proud supporter of the Owatonna Today Show. I didn't just want another job, I wanted a career, so I expressed myself. I was new to town and I didn't know where to turn for a job, so I decided to express myself. I decided to express myself and they helped find the right career for me. Express Employment Professionals is in contact with thousands of companies in need of quality employees. Come in now and get the job you deserve. Do you know how to safely dispose of your prescription and non-prescription drugs? Not by flushing them down the toilet or putting them in the garbage. Doing so pollutes our rivers, streams, and drinking water supply. Take it to the box instead for safe, secure disposal. It's easy. Bring your unused medications in their original containers to the drop-off locations listed on the screen and drop them in the Take It to the Box drop box. Proper disposal of unwanted medications keeps them out of the hands of children and out of our environment. This is a message from the Safe and Drug-Free Coalition of Steele County. Hi, I'm Doug Johnson with the Otana Business Incubator. We're here to help small businesses start and to grow. We're a proud sponsor of the Otana Today Show. 
Welcome to Bremer Bank. I am Jason Eiberg. And I am Shannon Pedersen. Bremer is a full financial services bank. We invite you to stop by Bremer Bank and experience the Bremer difference. You, you are, are always, always welcome, welcome at Bremer. Bremer. Hello, I'm David Einhouse with the Oatana Foundation. Thank you to all of our donors who have helped make Oatana a better place to live. Will you join us today with a financial gift? Oatana Foundation is a proud sponsor of the Oatana Today Show. Welcome to the Oatana Today Show. It's summertime, a great time to take a road trip. And as a suggestion, I'm going to take you on a road trip that my husband and I just did a couple of weeks ago to Mackinac Island in Michigan. And we drove across the state of Wisconsin and we entered Michigan right here at Menominee, drove along in the upper peninsula of Michigan, all the way around here, very scenic drive. You can see a lot of a lot of Lake Michigan. And we ended up in St. Ignace, Michigan. From there we took the ferry to Mackinac Island. And now I'm going to show you some of the highlights of our trip to Mackinac Island. It's early in the morning here on St. Ignace, Michigan, on beautiful Lake Huron. We're on our way over to Mackinac Island to spend part of the day there. And I'm giving you a look at the slow panoramic view of the harbor. We're taking Starline ferry service over there. And we'll see what there is to see on Mackinac Island. You're looking at the Mackinac Bridge. It stands between the Upper Peninsula and Lower Peninsula of Michigan. We'll be riding on that bridge later on. Quite a suspension bridge, isn't it? in the morning and this is the main street on Mackinac Island, the main commercial district. Not a lot of activity right now. I'm standing in the middle of the street. The interesting thing about Mackinac Island is that no cars are allowed. People get um, around by walking, biking, and then they have um, horse-drawn carriages. The thing that you really have to watch out for are the bikes. The bikes are everywhere and people are zooming around like crazy. We're on Market Street on Mackinac Island and the island itself was actually discovered if you want to say that by a Jesuit priest in 1670 and then the British in 1781 made it a center of their military and fur, fur trade activity. So there's a tremendous amount of history here on the island and it's a lot of fun to walk up and down the streets and just look at the architecture, read the signs, and get kind of a feel for the history of this marvelous island. I said earlier, transportation on the island is by foot, by bike, or by horse-drawn carriage. Even the delivery trucks and the, and the work trucks are actually workhorses, <laughs> uh, buggies and, um, and, and uh, work wagons. 
There's a cute little carriage. This one is probably from the Grand Hotel. Seats fewer people, has a little Surrey fringe on it. So that's how you get around Mackinac Island. Here's the service wagon for Mackinac, Mackinac Island. This is the porch of the Grand Hotel. The longest porch on Mackinac Island for sure. Goes on forever. This shot gives you a better idea of the whole length of the porch of the Grand Hotel. And the view is spectacular. You turn around and you look over the lake. And then way in the distance is the Mackinac Bridge. We're inside the Grand Hotel here on Mackinac Island. And this is the area right before you go into the main dining room. You really need to come and walk through the hotel and see it when you come here to the island. And when you're done having lunch at the Grand Hotel, you can take in a game of croquet or bocce ball on their beautiful green lawn. Yes. We're taking the approach, we're going on the Mackinac Bridge. It spans the strait between Lake Michigan and Lake Huron. And here we go underneath the first structure. wires on the right and left. Pretty cool. And we've almost made it through all the way to the other side, to the lower peninsula of Michigan. Great view. Thanks so much for joining us on our trip to Mackinac Island in Michigan. It was a wonderful trip. The countryside is beautiful and it would be well worth your time to take four or five days off. It's really not that far away. And see what Michigan has to offer. Thanks for joining us at Mackinac Island on the Owatonna Today Show.
Hi, Warren Abraham, Abraham Consulting Technologies, your one-stop technology shop. We support the Otana Today Show. Thank you for staying with us. We do have announcements that we want to pass along. Now, July is a very busy month. We do want to uh, remind you, in case you missed a couple of our programs and people are on here talking about their events, coming up on the 11th, that's this week, that's on a Friday, uh, is going to be the weekend out with Park and Rec, starting on Friday evening with Disney's uh, animated movie, Frozen, a big hit. You're going to want to see that if you haven't had a chance. That's down in Central Park. Saturday is a bike safety course at 9 a.m. at Morehouse. And then the fabulous Backyard Blast at Middle Springs Park. It sounds like so much fun. 10 until 2, picnic lunch and lots of lawn games. And then on Sunday, you can swim all day or starting at noon for $2 out at the River Springs Water Park. That is a deal you can't beat. Again, that's uh, coming up this weekend. Also on July 12th, it is the Otana Art Center's birthday. And they're ask you to join they're asking people to join them for a family celebration of artistic proportions there will have a variety of art activities for all ages and an art center scavenger hunt music food to purchase as well as interactive family friendly timeline of art center history and more and then also on the 12th will be music of the early 70s that's going to be at the Steele County Fairgrounds from noon until 6. Some of the entertainers uh, are Papa John Colstead, City Mouse, the Daisy Dillman Band, the High and Mighty. And it's $5 admission to the fairgrounds, and they ask for no pets, please. And, of course, as always, at the fairgrounds, food and beverages are available. And then this weekend is the Steele County Historical Extravaganza starting July 12th with their uh, Chuck Wagon Supper. And that is from 5.30 until 7. You do need to get tickets in advance at the History Center as well as at Triumph or at Cocky Jewelers. And then on Saturday or Sunday, excuse me, everything at the History Center will be open with lots of entertainment. Uh, the Cannon West Old Society uh, performers will be there. Vintage baseball, tractor pull, the village is going to be open for you to explore and do lots of things. And that is, again, this weekend. And also... We do want to remind you that um, coming up is going to be next week at St. Joseph's Church will be the American Red Cross Blood Drive. And we do ask that you get the gift of life. You can contact St. Joseph's Church at 800-733-2767. We thank you for joining us on this Wednesday. And please come back on Friday when we're going to be speaking with Kelly Lynn Meeks. She's going to be uh, at the Arts Center doing several um, classes for dialects, and then Joshua Archer of Express Employment Professionals will be along. That's all on Friday. So we hope to see you then. For Leon Alt, I'm Betty Johnson. This has been the Wednesday edition of the Owatonna Today Show. <laughs>